afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. When a barn goes up in flames, many farmers never recover. So it's critical that fire safety is a priority on the farm. To draw attention to fire and farms, a public-private partnership is reaching out to all farm businesses with a clear and simple message. fire ripped through and destroyed a dairy of distinction early this morning. We weren't aware that the barn was on fire until people stopped by and started knocking in the windows to wake us up. By then there was a lot of fire in the building. Within a matter of a few hours, everything was gone. And we lost a good amount of cows. Probably about 40 heads perished in the fire. There is a mourning period, I guess, and I would say it was a good three years before we really came to peace mm -hmm. with it, cried every day for a long time. Mm -hmm. This loader we had burnt a couple years ago. When it was fully involved, my brother said there was flames about 40 feet in the air. In a matter of probably 15 minutes, it went from running to completely gone. The next day was utter chaos, feeding 800 cows with a small tractor with bucket loader. It, we were lost without it. I didn't come down here for about two months after it burnt just because it, I mean, I was, I was sick to my stomach. Yeah. A person driving from Middlebury knocked on our door at 11.30 at night, yelled, your barn's on fire. There were flames 70 feet in the air. There were, well, about 80 head that died in the fire. <clears throat> It was a bad night. It was tough for me to even come down here for the following year. I, uh, I didn't care about coming down here. Every year, devastating fires occur on Vermont farms. In addition to loss of property and animals, livelihoods and way of life are lost. In this video, you will learn about potential fire hazards on the farm and steps you can take that will protect both farm and family. Nice job, very good. An important first step is for you to identify all the fire hazards on your farm by performing a walkthrough while filling out a fire safety checklist and sketch. From this, you will develop a pre-plan to share with your local fire department. It is not uncommon for your insurance company to assist you with your walkthrough. We recommend you organize your search by barn, housing, farm machinery, and shop. So typical of a farm shop, we have the cutting torches with the oxygen and acetylene tanks. The problem area I can see here is the leftover canisters of oil, particularly the oily rags can be an issue if you're doing any cutting in this area. Sparks can fly up, catch this or any oil uh, left on the surface. A good point here is they have the extinguisher affixed to the cart itself. So here we have the MIG welder uh, sitting amongst a lot of debris and combustible materials, the cardboard, grease gun, oil cans, things like that. Uh, this can be a problem when you're welding. Sparks from the welder, jumping onto that and starting a fire. So here we have the shop grinder. Make sure that combustibles don't accumulate around the base of it. Sparks coming off this, this can quickly start a fire. Here we have three freezers or refrigerators and two microwaves plugged into extension cords attached to that one circuit. Uh, this circuit they've been taped and temporarily repaired. This is a problem. These will heat up and could potentially start a fire. Keep in mind extension cords are only for temporary use. Here we have the second electrical cord running along the floor. This can potentially be run over and cut, and this could create a problem if there are any combustibles around it. Make sure you check all of your buildings for uncovered boxes like this. So the solution here is fold these into the box with a proper cover or outlet, and that should take care of the issue. So here we have an example of a newly installed fire extinguisher. However, this is not free and easy access to it. All of this should be away from the extinguisher so you can easily grab it. And here we have live wires that are just hanging from the ceiling. These not only are dangerous for bodily injury, but could potentially short out on this steel and cause a fire. 
Here we have boots and uh, coveralls leaning up against this compressor. This will get very hot and could potentially ignite these materials. Here we have an area heater in the utility room of the milk house. There are a couple of calf blankets draped over it to dry them out. This can be a problem as this heater will get quite hot and could potentially ignite this material. This should be removed immediately. So here's an incandescent bulb surrounded by a tremendous amount of cobwebs and dust. They have the potential of igniting this cobweb. This should be replaced with a CFL or LED type bulb or a dustproof canister light. Here we have properly installed electrical switches and receptacles. They're in plastic conduit and enclosed in waterproof housing for both the switch and receptacle. Here's an example of a properly uh, installed fire extinguisher. It's in an easily accessible location, great signage, very visible and uh, easy to get to. Some panels should remove any uh, obstacles in front of them so you can access them. Reduce the amount of dust and debris in here. Should have the covers closed on them. Here's an example of an open splice that could become a problem. This was left there from one of the fans that was removed some time ago and that should be in an enclosed junction. Broken electrical conduit, the wires are hanging free. It puts stress on the wires, potentially eroding the covering and uh, possibly shorting it out. More broken conduit. And then we have a small amount of coiled wire right below it. This is a problem as it can overheat and cause a fire. Uncovered light switch and two uncovered receptacles. This is a problem as it will accumulate dust and dirt in there with the potential of arcing from the wire connections, cause a fire. The owner should get an electrician in here to cover these junctions and put a cover on that switch box. Here we have an open spliced wire left dangling in the air. As you can see, it's live. If this comes into contact with any metal, this could short out and potentially light the debris and grain and everything on the ground uh, on fire. We also have a live switch and receptacle with a partially broken cover. There's an accumulation of dust and cobwebs in here. This wire should be placed in a proper junction box or removed altogether by an electrician. This cover should be reinstalled with a new one. Here's an example of a potential fire hazard. We have an aging tractor that leaks oil and grease and is parked next to piles of hay when it's hot and can potentially light this hay on fire. At the time of the fire, this loader did not have a fire extinguisher in it. If there had been an actual fire extinguisher in this machine and my brother was able to use it at the first sign of smoke, we had a highly good chance of saving this loader. Now every single piece of our equipment has at least a two and a half pound ABC fire extinguisher. Issues with employee housing, particularly those that have migrant workers, can have issues with the grease on cook stoves, smoke detectors. By law, they should be hardwired. Unfortunately, in many cases, been disconnected or the batteries taken out for another purpose, rendering them ineffective. Make sure that the fire extinguishers are up to date and uh, located properly throughout the mobile home or employee housing. Once you've completed the inspection and filled out the farm fire pre-plan and noted the hazards on your floor plan map, give a copy to your local fire department. In addition, install a reflective E911 locatable address sign clearly visible at the entrance of your farm. This will save the fire department precious minutes in the event of a fire. Also, if you have a farm pond or stream, consider installing a dry hydrant. Dry hydrants provide firefighters with easy access to a critical source of water. But remember, your first line of defense against a fire spreading is to have working fire extinguishers on site. This is what we see oftentimes on farms. Old, outdated extinguishers that are in desperate need of service. Most of the extinguishers have expired. We have no more service inside. We're missing parts on here, and we can see that there's heavy rust on a lot of them. Oftentimes, farmers will see that the gauge still says green and just automatically assume that the extinguisher is still good. It doesn't necessarily mean that the extinguisher is gonna work during a fire. When a fire extinguisher sits on the ground, 
it's more conducive to corrosion. It's not uncommon for a fire extinguisher to lose its pressure because the vessel itself is rusted through. This is a good example of a fire extinguisher. It's very, very dangerous. This has about 200 pounds of pressure. When I flip the extinguisher over and I look at the back, I can see that the fire extinguisher is actually bellied a little bit and we can see massive corrosion in here. Fire extinguishers can explode and you can be injured. Two people in the past 10 years in the United States have been killed by fire extinguishers that have exploded. Seeing the conditions that fire extinguishers are in, especially on farms, they need to be inspected because most of the time, although you think they're good, there's actually something wrong with them. The cost of having them come and do a yearly maintenance check is, is just peanuts. The inspection is what gives us maximum assurance that the fire extinguisher is going to work when we actually need it. Fire extinguishers are required to be inspected annually, internally inspected and examined every six years, and hydrostatically tested every 12 years. Contact your local service provider for fire extinguishers, have it assessed properly by a hazard analysis, install the correct size and type extinguishers throughout the farm, and train the employees on how to use those extinguishers. Now, typically a barn this size, we would have a fire extinguisher located every 75 feet. So it's not uncommon to come into a large farm and find 20 and 30 fire extinguishers. When we hang a fire extinguisher up, you've now allocated the fire protection to a very specific location. In the event that there's a fire, people know exactly where that extinguisher is located and know exactly where to go to get it to put the fire out. So this is what a properly mounted fire extinguisher looks like. We notice the fire extinguisher has been covered in a bag. This will prevent the fire extinguisher from being covered with debris. Pull the cover off and the fire extinguisher is now readily available. The fire extinguisher is on a hanger. We see a pull pin on here fixed with a tamper seal and we see a new service tag that was just maintained properly. The extinguisher is sized correctly. This is a 10 pound ABC. It's on this side of the pole so that things that are coming down through the aisle are not going to knock it off. It's also been moved away from where cows can't reach it as well. It's important that everybody on the farm knows how to use a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers are to be used only at the incipient stage of a fire. When the fire first starts, these are a very effective tool. The method in which we are using an extinguisher is called the PASS method. The PASS method stands for Pull, Aim, Squeeze, Sweep. Pull the pull pin, aim it at the base of the fire, squeeze the valve assembly, and sweep. Grab the extinguisher, aim it at that left front corner, sweep all the way across the base. Okay, you ready? Nice job, very good. Bien, bien. No bien. No bien. They only work during the incipient stage of the fire, but if you discover a fire, call for help immediately. Call the fire department. Grab the extinguisher, use the pass method, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep, put the extinguisher down, and stay away from the fire. Can you push down on it? Hard. <laughs> nice job, very good, very good. It was a, a bearing that was squealing and we knew it was gone, but never entered our minds that it would cause a fire. It's just taking care of things. We thought it was properly insured. But when you start talking about replacement costs, it was underinsured. We made the decision not to rebuild. I just didn't want to do it again. Losing our cows, that was our livelihood. We were starting over and trying to figure out a way that we could keep the farm financially viable. Uh, we had intentions to rebuild. You can insure a barn for what it's worth but you can't insure it for replacement value. When our renewal date came, we got a certified letter saying that they were dropping our insurance and had to scramble and start all over from scratch. By the time we put all the figures together, it wasn't economically feasible that we continue.
And so remember, fire safety is up to you. For more information, contact UVM Extension, the Agency of Agriculture, or your insurance agent. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.